Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu a rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm ad-din wa ba'd assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is your brother Abu Ibrahim John Starling coming to you again for another live broadcast here with the American graduates of the Islamic University of Medina It is a great privilege of mine and an honor to be joining you broadcasting live with a great group of guys. Uh, inshallah, I hope that uh, you have been enjoying and benefiting from the previous broadcast from the various different uh, presenters and graduates. Uh, tonight, I wanted to um, I wanted to share a couple of thoughts, really mainly one thought. Uh, some of you may know, but I have been living in uh, T Tanzania, in Africa, for the last six months. I've been living in Dar es Salaam, and in the last couple of days, I had the uh, pleasure of visiting a smaller city uh, called Morogoro, which is about two hours to the west. Uh, and when you leave the big city of Dar es Salaam, which is pretty much the commercial capital, and uh, there's a lot of actual government buildings there. Uh, the population is very high, it's the port city. So there's a lot of hustle and bustle and the city is built up quite nicely. Uh, there's some very, very nice neighborhoods. Of course, there is still the element of poverty that is very well known uh, in uh, this continent. Uh, however, there's normal facilities that everyone is, is accustomed to having, especially in the Western world. I myself, I live in a nice apartment, uh, alhamdulillah, I have basic modern things. However, when you go outside, especially outside of the city, and you go into the smaller villages, that's when you really, really appreciate the modern conveniences that you have. And so, over these couple of days, while I was on uh, these travels, um, that was a major part of my experience was seeing how people of lesser means live and the struggles that they have to go through. Uh, and it reminded me uh, of the very important um, task that we have of being appreciative of the many blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us. And we can find this theme run throughout the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, He says, Alam taraw anna Allah sakhara lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. This verse in Surah Luqman, Allah says, Do you not see that Allah has subjugated for you what is in the heavens and whatsoever is in the earth? And he has completed and perfected for you his, his bounty, both hidden and apparent. So many of us, we enjoy uh, an abundant amount of blessings. I'm talking about tangible, worldly things. We all share many blessings we all that are, are blessed with eyesight and the faculties of hearing and our mental capacity and etc but when it comes to the modern conveniences and the things that make life easy um we have to be very very aware of being appreciative for those things and a part of being appreciative is harnessing that which has been subjugated for us something that's been put at our service harnessing it for good using it for what is permissible and more importantly using it for what is beneficial right so we employ these things for that which will help us in our lives help our neighbors and our communities um, this is very important and this is a part of being appreciative and showing gratitude to allah and from the wisdom and the lofty aims and objectives of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in showering us with blessing is so that we will in turn recognize that we are in need of him, we are impoverished, that we cannot do without him, and in turn we are grateful, we show that gratitude, we praise Allah and we thank him for what he has given, and we increase in our love for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which of course drives us, the love that we have for Allah, drives us in our worship. It's what keeps us moving forward. So this is the particular point, the, the, the particular point that I want to share this evening, and that is the value of water. Because 
here, many countries in Africa, many regions, a part of the difficulties that they face is water. There's a lack of water. And uh, Tanzania is uh, no stranger to that. They're not exempt from this problem. They have a large lack of water, which is a very, very, for us as Americans or Westerners, it's at the tap. I mean, you turn the tap on and it runs freely. Gallons per minute are spilled from the shower. But here, many of the people, they don't have running water in their homes. So what they have to do is they have to walk to the well. And the walk could be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, could be half an hour, it could be more depending on where they live. And they have to fill up their jugs. They carry gallon jugs with them, five gallon jugs. And that's what we often see in National Geographic and on TV where they're doing documentaries where the women are carrying these large jugs on their head and children are carrying these big jugs in their hands. This is water, friends. They are carrying water to do what with? To bring home, to cook, to drink, to bathe, to do the washing, to do the wuvu for the Muslim families. And this is a daily task, believe it or not, for many people. They walk back and forth to these wells carrying these buckets of water. Imagine how you would use water, your water consumption, if you had to walk miles and then carry buckets of water. Imagine what kind of consumption uh, your level of consumption would be. Right now, for the most part, our level of consumption, as I mentioned, is gallons per minute. I mean, I can remember uh, looking at some water bills, and in the month, you're going to consume like two, three, four, five thousand gallons of water in the month or more, depending on how many people, um, to many, how many people live in your household. So this is something that's important uh, to keep in mind. Uh, part of being grateful for the bounty that you have is not only harnessing it for good, but also not wasting it. The things that we have, we shouldn't squander and waste them. And this, of course, is the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that we should not be wasteful. And even when it comes to our worship acts like making wudu, that we should be uh, frugal and economical with even such things as water. Right? So when you're making your wudu, uh, you should be careful that you don't leave the tap wide open to where you are wasting gallons to make wudu. And if you're conscious of this and you have the intention behind it and you turn the water down just to consume maybe a cup or two cups or something like that or three uh, to make your wudu, then you'd be rewarded for this as well as part of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'll leave you with that thought and I hope uh, that you will share with us in the comments some other ways that we can be economical and frugal with our resources. Remember, everything that we have is a resource. Even time is a resource. So please do us, uh, do us a favor, if you will. Uh, engage with us here in the comments. We want to hear from you greatly. We want you to be involved. Give us some more ideas how we can be economical, how we can be frugal with our resources, how we can save, and by doing so, show our appreciation for what we have and being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.